Well, I'm on the phone with Maine Maritime Academy head women's basketball coach Craig Dagan, as we are every week. And coach, a, a, a pretty good trip to Vermont. You, you split, winning uh, against Green Mountain, losing against Castleton in a close game, and then uh, defeating UMaine Fort Kent last night at home. Yeah, we actually, the the games against Vermont were at home, too. Oh, um, sorry, yeah. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. No, it was. I mean, we actually, uh, we've played a lot better basketball in the last two weeks. And, uh, um, you know, we did what we needed to do on Friday night against Green Mountain. And um, everybody had a chance to jump in and contribute. We shot the ball really well. And, and uh you know, it's always hard when you're playing against maybe a team where, you know, the score is a little bit lopsided to concentrate and, and do the right things and and continue to work on the stuff that you need to do in order to compete, you know, especially the next day against a quality team like Castleton. And, and I thought our kids did, a, did an excellent job with that. And, you know, one of the big tells for me is we've been just preaching and moving the ball and sharing the ball. And uh, I think it's some on godly stat but in our last like 85 field goals made i think we've assisted on like 75 of them wow um which is uh and that probably not completely accurate but it's really close to that number and uh i think we had you know all but one field goal last night was was assisted on so we're doing a really good job of sharing the ball uh you know we still have you know our weaknesses and one of the things that really hurt us against calston we you know, probably outplayed them for 35, 36 minutes and had a lead with four minutes to go. And, you know, our defensive transition broke down and and our, just our whole mindset as far as who we are defensively really uh, really broke down in the last few minutes and, and they killed us in the last three minutes of the game. And, you know, truth be told, Chris, it's the difference between a championship caliber team like them and their championship pedigree over the last few years and a team that's still learning how to win. And, we got outscored badly in the fourth quarter. I think it was like 21 to 11, and it was the difference in the game. And uh, despite playing really well, and you know, we went back, watched film, and you know, had some great film sessions, and talked about what we needed to do, and talked about more of the mental changes and the physical changes. And we had a tie game last night going into uh, the fourth quarter. I, um, I, I once again, I believe with with Fort Kent, who's Quality team, 16 and three on the year. They got some tremendous athletes. They beat Husson earlier in the year, and wow. and uh, and we outscored them 24 to 11 in the fourth quarter. So it was a complete opposite of what we did Saturday. And you know, those are the things that we're looking for in the progression of the team, and and how we get better from game to game, and how we work on the things that we didn't do well in the previous games. And you know, hopefully we took a big step in the right direction, beat a quality team. But more importantly, you know, the big thing on on our scouting report. And the keys to last night was just win the fourth quarter, and we did. And our kids' energy level and the contributions that we got from people were were great. And uh, so, yeah, listen, I love the growth of the team. And and uh, as I said, we've been playing a lot better. And and this is the time of year where we have to play better and and continue to progress towards the playoffs. So I like where we're at. And it was a good week, winning two out of three. And and we've got a really big weekend ahead of us. Well, you got to remember too, this is an extremely young team. Oh, I don't forget that. <laughs> no, I'm not, I, I, not reminding you, but, but all right, Coach, you have to remember. But, I, I mean, it's, you know, our listeners and, and, and the, the general uh, community, I mean, I think back to last year, and I mean, this time last year you had six six players on the bench. And, oh, yeah. you know, now you've got a full roster, a lot of them uh, are freshmen, sophomores, and who are getting playing time and, and – I mean, just setting yourself up for tremendous years down the road. No doubt. And, you know, that's part of our focus, too. I mean, any time that you don't want to lose sight of where you're at right now, but at the same time, you don't want to lose sight of where you want to go. And, you know, we're trying to – we've had a few years where it has been okay, and not only are we trying to win in the process right now, but we're trying to get back to where we're building things and we have some sustainability moving forward for the future. And, and you know – you know, we're we're going through some rough patches with some young kids, and, you know, sometimes the easy thing to do would be to pull them out, and, but we're letting them play through a lot of stuff and a lot of mistakes and and uh, the, in, in hopes of not only winning now and them growing, you know, to, for the long run this year and being better at the end of this year, 
but also for the future. But at the same time, Chris, I mean, now these freshmen that we speak of also have, you know, 65 practices under their belt, a bunch of shoot arounds, uh, 16 games under 16 their belt. Games yep. like the, you know, we hope that they are not freshmen at this point in time. That they're, you know, they're somewhere in between that, you know, that curve between. Oh my God, I'm I'm a college <laughs> basketball player to, you know, learning to what it takes to be an effective college basketball player. And you know, every given night, one of them kind of goes backwards, but on any given night, two or three of them really continue to take steps moving forward too and you just don't know which ones are going to be doing which that's the problem on any given night but what what about fatigue i mean you know it is playing 16 games practicing so much this is i mean if if they were main kids they they, they'd be almost done with their season in terms of 16 games where the regular main high school kid plays 18 regular season games Yeah, and I mean, we're in 18 games with the scrimmages and exhibition games. That's a great point. It's what we talked about last year. I mean, excuse me, last night after the game is, all right, you know, this is a really challenging type of year or time of year in regards to the physical and the mental battle that each one of these young kids has to go through. The upperclassmen are used to it at this point in time. And to be honest with you, last night, you know, late in the game or late third quarter, early fourth quarter, you could see that fatigue, that physical and mental fatigue set in with our young kids as it did on Saturday. And our upperclassmen did a phenomenal job in the energy levels and, and what they did to, to not only get them personally over the hump, but to get those young kids over the hump. Yep. And, you know, Christy Willie was really great last night. And, especially with her energy. Alex Winchester coming off the bench had a career high last night, and those two played like juniors. And, and they really were the difference, as well as Maggie McConkie. Those three were the difference in the game, and then the freshmen just followed. And we're hope, you know, and we talk about it. It's one thing we don't hide from in this program is we do talk about all those mental and physical hurdles that they have to overcome so that they're aware of it and – uh and uh, this is, you're right, this is a challenging t- time of year for our young kids and fighting that fight, you know, between second semester, the practices and the games and, you know, us balancing hard practices and just, you know, coming in and being light and shooting around. And, you know, that's exactly what we're going to have the next two days. And we've got two days of preparation and most of it will be just mental preparation um, so that they can, you know, you know, recover physically. So, so, yes, there is a part of it, but we don't want them to fall back on that as an excuse either. We, we talk about it, we address it, uh, but at the same time, they need to learn how to deal with it, and I think our upperclassmen do a great job helping them with that. All right, so as you mentioned, a very important weekend this weekend. You play Colby Sawyer and New England College uh, on the road, and Colby Sawyer is fourth in the NAC. Uh, New England College is sixth. You're nestled right in between <laughs> at fifth. Yeah, I mean, enough said, right? I mean, we got a team that's in front of us, and it's a big game, and we win this game. You know, you give yourself a little bit of breathing room, and we're on the down. We're, you know, we're halfway through our conference schedule, so every game just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, in uh, New England College, be nice to win that game just to stay in front of them. And, and you know, our one of our goals, to reiterate, you know, part of the conversations that we had early in the year was to host a playoff game and, you know, we're one or two wins away from being in a position to host a playoff game, and that's what we're shooting for right now. So, um, you know, and then, you, you know, the worst case scenario, you go and lose two, and, you know, you're looking at the team that's in seventh place breathing up your neck, uh, or breathing down your neck uh, to take that last spot. So, you know, the good thing is it's our second-to-last big road trip of the year. Um, you know, if we can split, that'd be great. If we can win two, that would be unbelievable and and uh, we, you know, after this weekend, you know, we've got uh, a lot of winnable games left on our schedule from a conference standpoint. That so it's a big weekend, and you know, if we can go and win two, and, and just I'm excited once again just to see where our kids are at. They know it's big. Then, then you know, they pay attention to the standings. They pay attention to what's going on, and I'm looking forward to see how they respond in a couple big games on the road. We've done well with big games at home. Now I'm really looking forward to see how we do with some big games on the road. And and this is almost the the little calm before the storm. Yeah, because no you, doubt about you, it. you've got two games this weekend, and then starting February 5th through the 13th, in eight days you've got five games. Yeah, we got a big push coming up, and that's why not only is 
the, you know, how we manage our kids from a rest standpoint, but every loss and every win just, you know, accumulates. Um, and, uh, you know, in the way that the conference schedule, you know, aside from Hudson and what they've done, they've had a tremendous year. There's a big, I mean, we could go, if we go on a little bit of a winning streak here, we could go from fifth to second pretty quickly. But we could also go from fifth to eighth pretty quickly, and that's pretty cool. I mean, there's there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, the, the conference is, is pretty even this year. Um, it's So it's, uh, you know, it's a good place to be, and it's exciting that with nine games left, there's still a ton of ton to play for and, and a lot going in uh, throughout the conference. So it's, uh, it should be an exciting last few weeks of the season. All right, Coach, rest up. I know you got a lot of screaming to do at practice. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's hard on the coach. I mean, you know, you, you've got to break down film. You've got to move everything around. And it, just like the players, you don't have much time in between games. No, listen, there's no time for sleep this time of year. <laughs> I gave my kids a quote the other day. Anybody that complains there's not enough time in the day, that means they're sleeping too much. So uh, we've got a few weeks left in the year, and, you know, our, our, from a coaching staff, we're going to invest all of our time and energy into preparing them the right way, and uh, there is no time for what was me. we got a job to do, and, and we're going to do it to the best of our ability. You can sleep all during April, right? Yeah, I can sleep on the bus. <laughs> I can sleep during in April, correct. <laughs> so I all appreciate right. it, Chris. Coach, have a good week. We'll talk to you next week. All right, take care. Week. All right, take care.